No matter what difficulties Russia faces, the Chinese people always stand with Russia. I hope the Chinese troops will deploy soon and defeat Western countries. As long as France and NATO send troops, we Chinese will send troops. China and Russia stand together and will defeat NATO and France. This man's statement quickly sparked discussions across Chinese social media. A man expressed dissatisfaction with the statement. I am increasingly confused now. Can any Chinese person represent the actions and attitudes of all Chinese people? This Chinese person, living in Russia, thinks he represents all Chinese people and made inappropriate remarks about sending troops. Why does someone living in Russia think he has a right to represent Chinese people and make such inappropriate remarks? Truly ignorant and arrogant. The reason this video became popular is due to recent terrorist attacks in Russia. On March 22nd, a large-scale shooting occurred at the Crocus City Hall near Moscow, Russia. Currently, it has led to the deaths of more than 140 people, with countless others injured. According to a Chinese student who experienced the attack, the gunfire lasted about 10 minutes and some people died on the spot. One of the Chinese students who experienced the terrorist attack is a 15-year-old boy going by the pseudonym Yu Tong. He witnessed the attack firsthand. According to his account, at around 8pm local time on the 22nd, he was watching a performance by the Russian rock band Picnic with a 14-year-old Russian girl at the concert hall. Yu Tong and the girl are both students at the Tchaikovsky Academic Music College and happened to be attending the concert during the school's spring break. After the attack, the police arrived at the concert hall and cordoned off the scene. Yu Tong was sent back to school by the police, but the girl he was with tragically died from being shot. Another Chinese student, Chen Yiming, said he was eating at the food court on the fourth floor of a mall about 200 meters away when he suddenly heard an explosion. According to his description, there was a very loud noise, and his initial reaction was that it was a drone strike. However, then there were gunshots like firecrackers, not continuous but shot by shot, and he realized it was a shooting. After hearing the sound, people around Chen began to stand up, and screams mixed with shouts of gunfire erupted. Hundreds of people ran out, and he followed suit downstairs. After running out of the mall, he saw that the glass on the fourth floor had shattered, emitting flames, and glass on the first floor had traces of cracks from gunfire. Then he saw people leaving in cars at the mall entrance, and some ran directly onto the nearby beltway. He followed along, continuously hearing gunshots. This gunfire lasted for about 10 minutes, and on the beltway, Chen saw that the top of the mall was on fire. In addition to Chinese students, local Chinese residents were also in a panic. Within the circle of Chinese students, some said they would not go out anymore and were too scared to risk their lives. Some even started selling bulletproof vests in WeChat groups. After the terrorist attack, China, which claims to be Russia's ally, shamelessly engaged in a series of profiteering operations. Due to fear of terrorist attacks and war, many Chinese residents and students in Russia planned to leave. However, when purchasing plane tickets, they were dumbfounded by the exorbitant prices of one-way tickets from Russia to China. It is now 1.49 a.m. Moscow time, and there are still many police cars patrolling the streets. But I found something outrageous, which is the soaring prices of plane tickets, probably increased by five to seven times. A few days ago, I helped a friend look for tickets because he needed to return home for exams. Today, when I checked the plane tickets again, although the price showed that it is around 2,000 RMB, Clicking into it revealed that it ranges from 10,000 to over 20,000 RMB. A while ago, round-trip tickets were only a little over 4,000. It is too outrageous. There are even first-class tickets priced over 50,000. It's really ridiculous. There have been many instances where Chinese travelers have been subjected to unfair practices in Russia. These include being overcharged for services such as a journey costing 1,000 rubles instead of the standard 200 rubles and encountering unexpected surcharges for hotel accommodations. Furthermore, reports indicate discrimination against Chinese tour guides operating in Russia. It has also been noted that certain actions by the Russian government have adversely affected Chinese nationals. 
If there's one country that's inherently xenophobic, it's definitely Russia. In 2017, when my family and I went to Russia for travel, the tour guide warned us to always carry our passports because the police would hassle us for money. We didn't encounter the police, but we met a Chinese person. He told me a story. He speaks fluent Russian. When he first arrived in Russia, he encountered two Russian police officers. The police asked him, do you have a visa? And then, do you have a passport? Seeing that his Russian was great and they couldn't find fault, one of the police officers directly took his passport into his own pocket and asked, do you still have a passport now? Actually, the Russian police officer hid the Chinese person's passport on purpose and tried to extort money. Another Russian police officer spoke in a very standard Beijing accent and said, hand over the money. The methods used to swindle Chinese people are too outrageous. Another official who swindled Chinese people is a Russian customs official. A blogger recounted his experience. I arrived at the Russian customs with a happy mood, but then something very infuriating happened. We held our passports ready to queue for stamping, and during the waiting process, staff approached us to ask questions, to which we all answered. At first, we felt they were quite friendly because our impression, the friendship between China and Russia is very good, and Russia is like a big brother, so passing through customs should be easy. But then we kept waiting. After one or two hours, our passports were checked, and I thought we were finally going to pass through. But after the check, they took our passports and wanted to inspect our luggage. And even so, our luggage was checked three times, constantly open, inspected, which was very troubling. The third time when they asked us to line up each piece of luggage, take out everything from the suitcase and lay it out, including underwear, this was the most infuriating thing for me. We ended up recording the whole process. After they finished taking photos and inspecting, we were stuck in endless waiting again. At that time, when we asked the staff when we could leave, the answer was always no. Then we realized something was wrong because all our paperwork should have been complete. After waiting for another three to four hours, Russian police officers told us that our paperwork was incomplete. They wouldn't let us pass through because we didn't have an invitation letter. But even after we submitted all the documents, they still found excuses not to let us through, even saying we violated immigration regulations and have suspicions of illegal immigration. They treated us like criminals, taking fingerprints and photos, but they had no evidence to prove that we were illegal immigrants, which made me very angry. At the end of 2023, many Chinese experienced the three-day visa incident in Russia. Although Chinese citizens were nominally exempt from visas to Russia, in reality, they are only allowed to stay for three days. The purpose was to illegally detain Chinese people. To return home, they had to pay money to the Russian customs. As a result, Russian customs were filled with stranded Chinese tourists. In addition to Chinese expatriates and students, Chinese businessmen were also greatly affected by the recent terrorist attacks. Recently, Moscow has been hosting some trade exhibitions and many Chinese businessmen are participating or preparing to participate. Ms. Cheng, a Chinese exhibitor, expressed her worries after the incident, saying, The incident happened only a few kilometers away from us. Most of the exhibitors from China were supposed to fly to Russia on the 25th, but the situation at the airport is unclear. This will definitely have a significant impact on customers, and the exhibition will surely have fewer attendees. On social media platforms, many exhibitors who had not yet departed were also asking whether they should continue to go. A Chinese exhibitor stated on social media that they had invested a considerable amount of money for the exhibition at the Expo Center in Moscow from March 27th to 29th. The samples and their team had already arrived in Moscow. However, after the terrorist attack, the Russian government announced the exhibition's cancellation. For them, all this investment went in vain. These losses worsened their already difficult business. What's even worse is that some businessmen couldn't even find a place to stay. Mr. Yang has been running a homestay in Moscow for many years. After learning about the difficulties faced by Chinese businessmen, he decided to help. He said, Today, I received many calls for help from exhibitors because Russian hotels are reservation-based and when the time is up, these people have nowhere to stay. Fortunately, I have rooms available here where they can stay temporarily for a while.
However, when overseas Chinese face difficulties and seek help, the Chinese Communist Party that claims to have Chinese people's backs often fails to appear in a timely manner. During the outbreak of the Russia-Ukrainian war, Chinese students stranded in Ukraine urgently sought evacuation. Even when their lives were threatened, the Chinese embassy not only scolded and refused assistance, but also demanded that they find solutions themselves. Ironically, the CCP government still promotes the ideology of Chinese people do not deceive other Chinese, another example of CCP's empty promises. Over the years, there have been countless jokes about the Chinese embassies abroad. Earlier this year, a Chinese student in France shared a hefty love from the Chinese embassy in France on Chinese social media Little Red Book. Unexpectedly, it was mocked. On February 21st, the student posted the Chinese New Year gift package from the embassy, saying excitedly, Receive the New Year gift from the embassy in France. Thank you for the love from the motherland. Shortly after posting, people posted reminders saying, Remember to check the expiration date before eating. The candy I received has expired for six months. The student replied later, After careful inspection, mine also expired in July 2023. This scene amused many people. Some sarcastically said, The love from the Chinese embassy is indeed very heavy. One person joked, This is a test of obedience. Patriotic little pinks will eat it without hesitation. Another comment said, This is the moldy love from the motherland CCP. Hurry up and eat it, child, so you can be patriotic after eating. Some others posted photos sarcastically saying, These expired candies are stronger than the influenza treatment medicine from the Chinese embassy in Japan. Apparently, during the pandemic, the Chinese embassy in Japan distributed a whole box of expired Chinese medicine to Chinese people in Japan. While the CCP fails to protect and assist overseas students, it excels at controlling and monitoring them. Li Ying is a student studying in England. She first realized she was being surveilled as she walked home after participating in an anti-CCP protest outside the Chinese embassy in London in 2022. In dim light, she and another protester were approached by a stranger trailing behind. Li Ying said, During the protest, middle-aged Chinese men often stood at a distance observing us, just watching. This was the second time I was followed, and I've received anonymous calls from Chinese numbers on my UK phone. She mentioned receiving daily calls from various numbers claiming to be anti-fraud groups, asking if she was sending messages to people living in China. Additionally, she received calls from the Chinese embassy asking about her health. Li Ying is not alone. The Guardian interviewed Chinese students and recent graduates in the UK who revealed that criticizing the CCP on British soil has led to surveillance, harassment, and other forms of intimidation from Chinese authorities. Zhou, a recent graduate in his 30s now working in the UK, participated in a protest commemorating the 34th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre in June of last year and shared related content on social media. Shortly after, his parents received a call from local Chinese authorities requesting his UK address and phone number, claiming it was for household registration purposes in China. Out of fear, Zhou refrained from attending protests for months, becoming despondent. In October, he logged back into WeChat and posted for the first time in two years. A week later, Zhou's mother, who works for a government agency, was summoned to a meeting by her supervisor. The supervisor informed her that Joe was engaging in sensitive activities abroad and warned that if he didn't stop, the jobs of their entire family members would be affected. Joe said, My mother was furious, but I told her that many students have encountered similar situations, which is normal. I've been keeping up with what's happening in China. In the past, I was ignorant of the red lines, unaware of which activities were safe. My biggest concern is my family's safety, as it is the primary issue. Other students are experiencing similar situation, including Fan and Sun. Fan said that after attending a rally last year, his family in China was informed by local police that he violated CCP laws by giving interviews to journalists. He had criticized the CCP under his real name and now fears returning to China. 
Swen, an undergraduate, said he knew of classmates being questioned by other Chinese students about participating in anti-Beijing protests. He even showed the Guardian a message from a WeChat group of Chinese students at his university, reminding others to express pro-China, pro-CCP views. In recent years, concerns have been raised about CCP surveillance and influence on British universities. From 2021 to 2022, the UK had 151,690 Chinese students, comprising the largest group of non-British students. Many universities in the UK have faced economic and political pressure from the CCP. In May last year, Anthony Finkelstein, Dean of City University of London, issued a statement acknowledging political pressure from across the higher education sector, including actions undertaken by the governments of China, Russia, and Iran. In March this year, Michelle Shipworth, an associate professor at the University College London (UCL), told the Telegraph that she was barred from teaching a course related to the CCP to protect the university's commercial interests. However, UCL claimed the move was aimed at safeguarding academic freedom. Despite CCP pressure, individuals like Fan remain undeterred. He believes that participating in protest in the UK has politically awakened him. He also said, "I feel like I've entered a new world. I didn't realize there were so many amazing people with the same political views as me before, willing to do something for our country."